Okay, this is the uh, second video in the ongoing series of videos for uh, family members of missing persons. Um, I touched in the first video on uh, an effective social media campaign and I think any kids these days would be able to help you with setting up a, uh, a Facebook page or even a group where you can put up all the relevant information about your missing loved one, your missing family member. And um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of how to do it. It's pretty simple. You can follow it through yourselves, get your kids to help you. And I think it's a very effective and, and broad reaching, uh, cost effective and fast method to spread the message far and wide. And I, I think it's probably one of the most valuable resources that's come to bear on uh, missing persons uh, in, well, more than a decade. So get on to it. I think there's a second thing that uh, people need to know that I'm going to touch on in this video, and it's called uh, the mobile phone. Um, people are often reported missing when they can't be contacted. They, they don't show up for birthdays and so on and, uh, when they'd be expected to. And um, first thing we try and do is is phone them. Well, there's a, a feature on your phone called uh, Find My iPhone. Now, providing the settings uh, on the recipient's phone, on the missing person's phone, are, uh, are set to allow the uh, Find My iPhone app, then uh, it's quite possible you could track the missing person's phone just with your own phone by using the Find My iPhone app, something very simple. I think most kids, again, would know all about this. They're pretty up on this technology. I know I struggle with it. But um, there's, there's another aspect that I want to go into that, that isn't often mentioned publicly. And that's the ability of the telco companies like Telstra here in Australia to actually track a handset. It's not something... They've got the ability to do it, but it's not something that they want the general public to know in a broader sense because otherwise they'd have every kid with a smartphone that's lost it under the pillow and tangled up in the bed sheets and down the back of the couch pillows who couldn't find their phone ringing the Telstra company on mum and dad's phone saying, can you track my iPhone for me? Normally the telcos will only do what's called an IMEI ping trace on a mobile phone handset uh, at the request of one of the official agencies like the federal police or the the state police, and, and sometimes even they've got to get um, a warrant to be able to, to do these things because it, it touches on people, impinging on people's privacy rights. But the fact remains that telcos can do what's called an IMEI, ping trace. I'm not a telecommunications engineer. I don't pretend to know all the mechanics of it. Uh, what I do know is that I've had Telstra conduct an IMEI ping trace on a missing persons case that I was researching, where eventually the, the gentleman was found murdered and he, his um, murderers were brought to justice. But I've had an IMEI ping trace done by a telco here in Australia before today, and so I know enough about it to let families of missing persons know that this is something that they should be, they should always consider fairly early on if they can, asking the police to perform such a trace. Uh, police are not telecommunications engineers. It may not occur to the specific officer in charge of your loved ones who's missing's case to, to immediately think, well, why don't I get an IMEI ping trace done by Telstra or the Telco? Essentially, what this, this particular technique does, you provide the police or the telecommunications company in this case with your lo missing loved one's mobile phone number who they have their account with, whether it's Telstra or Optus or Vodafone or whoever it might be here in Australia. And from that information, they can track down the actual handset, the telephone handset, its chassis number, which is the, the hardware that the phone operates on. It has its own unique individual serial number and the hardware uh, is independent of the software that operates the phone and it's independent of the SIM card and the the other technology that, that uh, telcos provide uh, within the handset. And essentially what an IMEI ping trace can do, 
even when the phone is flat, even when the battery's flat, providing that there's a SIM card in it, I, as I understand it, um, and providing that the phone is turned on, um, then the telco company can broadcast a signal from all of their towers within the country, in Australia in this case, that has enough energy in it to provide the, re the handset with sufficient energy via the actual radio frequency transmission for the handset to be able to perform what is called a handshake, for the handset to be able to contact or, or beep back to the nearest cell phone tower. And providing that the, the, um, the phone is within cell phone tower reception distance, that handshake can provide the telco with a bearing, a compass bearing, a direction from the nearest tower and an approximate distance. This would give uh, police who are searching for the missing person at least a starting position as to where the person's handset might be located. Um, as I said, the battery can be flat. Providing the phone's turned on and that it has a SIM card in it, uh, it's my belief or my understanding that if the phone will get sufficient energy from the signal to be able to ping back to the tower, or in some cases ping back to more than one tower, it may ping two. In a situation where it can ping two towers, then the telco can triangulate between the two towers and actually give quite a close approximation as to the position of that handset. So if you're the member of a, a family who's got a missing person in it, and you haven't requested the policeman in charge of your missing person's case to have the telco perform an IMEI ping trace, then I would strongly suggest that you do. Um, there's only three or four, about four circumstances where it won't work. One is where the SIM card's been removed. Uh, two is where the phone is buried underground. Number three is where it's underwater. And number four is where the phone's been totally destroyed, perhaps in a fire or crushed, in, you know, chopped up into tiny pieces. In that situation, it's not going to work. But it's certainly a valuable tool to know. And I'd suggest that um, if you've reported a member of your family missing, that you ask your case handler at Missing Persons to specifically request of the missing person's telco, so Telstra or Vodafone or... Optus, whoever it might be, that they perform an IMEI ping trace on your behalf. Uh, the police may have to get a warrant to do it, but it's something that shouldn't be overlooked. It's not widely known. The telcos don't publish it. As a member of the family of a missing person, you need to be aware of it, and that is some one of the steps that you should take. Again, I've gone longer than five minutes, so uh, I'll cut it off here, and I'll come back with another topic on the next video. Hopefully this one helps. Catch you later.